It's finally time we talk to Crocodogs, everyone. The hounds of Don't Starve Shipwrecked. Well, nowadays at least. For you see, we first had normal hounds to deal with on high seas come wave attacks until sea hounds up and replaced them. Then, like a year after Don't Starve Shipwrecked was actually quote unquote finished, Crocodiles came and replaced sea hounds even as the game's wave enemies. So here we are today, finally, with a load of colorful crocs looking to munch our butts. But from their unique variants, to how to actually handle them on and off the water, let's talk these not-so-friendly puppies, yes? Well, yes, but actually no, as we can't discuss any variant of Crocodog without first finding one. And you might be surprised by just how difficult that might be. Unlike hounds, Crocodogs are very limited in how they spawn. Therefore, Crocodog Waves will be our best for consistent Crocodog encounters. Before you is a statistical breakdown of how average Crocodog Waves will operate from day one and beyond. So if you are curious, be sure to pause the video and feast your eyes on it. But for those of you out there who take what the game gives you as you go about your business, or for those who are completely new to Crocodogs I suppose, then these sounds will be either very familiar or wants to commit to memory from here on out. In either case, let's listen in to what a Crocodog's warning actually sounds like. If you hear this, you best be prepared. But here's the thing, natural waves are not going to be our only encounter with the beasts. Meat dropped on the water by darn near anything will have a chance to spawn crocodogs, sea hounds, or both. And here's how it works. Take the hunger value of a meat and divide it by 200 to get a value that can then be multiplied by 100 to get what will be our numbered chance to potentially spawn hostiles on the water with said meat when it's dropped, even by us. This also extends to when we kill stuff like jellyfish on the water too, mind you, and know that after the meat roll happens, we will also have a 60% chance for a crocodile encounter or a 40% chance of a group of sea hounds showing up. But I gotta be honest, that 40% feels a lot higher most of the time. But now, does that mean meat with higher values are gonna offer greater chances at spawning these encounters? Yes. Yes, it does. Also note that we can actually use the same meat every single time too, so make note there. Also note that monster foods of any kind will not work in all this, so don't even bother. So then, does all of this just culminate in a way to quote unquote farm crocodogs and sea hounds? Yeah, I guess so, but things can get out of hand quickly, and honestly, I am only doing this if I am well prepared first. And what could better prepare us for hordes of hostiles than elephant cacti, everyone? I'll tell ya, absolutely nothing. Crocodogs can traverse land and sea, so leading waves of the suckers to where you need them to be will not be an issue. Now I personally believe that elephant cacti is the best wave defense in all of Don't Starve, but hey, you do you. Because let's say you don't actually have any setup or simply can't reach them in time. What then? Well, why not lead the crocs to their cute death by the likes of bottlenose bolfins here? Bolfins are naturally hostile to them and are horde-like in nature, so they will mess them up very quickly, especially in large numbers like in the pots found out on the ocean. Again, you do what's best for you, because at the end of the day, one could just tank the crocodogs on a boat and not take actual damage themselves, use the wild boars to thin the herd potentially, kite them themselves knowing that crocodogs can actually be perma-stunned very much unlike hounds, and so on and so forth. Play your way. And if you are one of those who does so and likes to use fish farms in your playthroughs, then you might know that there are but one of three ways to encounter crocodogs with their predator timer. Will every farm spawn a predator? No, but best be ready to see them regardless. They will eat fish in these farms and will deplete them fully if left to do so. So don't let them do so. 
Use walls, ball fins, or yourself to help prevent that from happening by gaining their aggro. And be prepared to keep doing this over and over and over again, unfortunately. But now is the time to talk special crocodogs, folks. Starting with Monsoon Season's blue variants here. They have 50 less health than normal dogs, but also deal 10 more damage overall. So make note there. They are also very unique in that they will occasionally choose to shake themselves off, resulting in puddles forming all around them, which will raise our wetness very rapidly, as well as slow us down. They also produce these puddles once killed, so there's really no escaping some negatives with these guys for sure. Especially if these puddles do end up spawning poison mosquitoes too. Other than that, however, they can be handled all the same as the rest, but will offer a 20% chance to drop seaweed too, so there's that. Now, seaweed is pretty good and can be cooked, dried, made in the crockpot recipes, used in many crafts that actually prevent poison, and much more. So, hey, I'll take it when they give it if you know what I mean. But finally, Dry Seasons Yellow Crocodogs here. Now I'm saying dry seasons and monsoon seasons because that's when we'll first encounter them. But they will show up later down the line outside of these seasons, just like blue and red hounds, so make notes. But they're identical to blue crocodogs, only they will poison us when they munch us this time around, even if we're on a boat. And that's really not fun. And the only ways we're getting out of it is by really not physically handling them ourselves. Not without some proper poison protection, that is. A seashell suit or horned helmet are the two armors that will block physical poison attacks, so you best get to it. And yellow crocodogs will be dropping venom glands on occasion, so there's a change too. Enjoy poison healing, dealing, and everything that comes with all of that. But before we go, one last note. Normal crocodogs drop one hound tooth with a 12.5% chance to drop another. Yellow dogs drop one each, and blues will drop two guaranteed. All of which is identical to hounds and all of their special variants at the end of the day. But the only shipwreck specific hound tooth craft will be a shark tooth crown here, which is just a head item that will give us a plus 6.6 .6 sanity gain when we're on a boat. So do with that as you please. And there you have it, everyone. A long overdue guide on crocodogs within Don't Starve Shipwrecks. They are definitely set apart from their hound counterparts out there in the constant, and that's the fun of them, I believe. But beware their bite, nonetheless. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wishes to all. Perhaps don't play fetch with these things. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.